Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Council, I'd like to welcome everyone here to our Easter Sunday service. Uh, it will be led by Pastor Joel, and the music will be from the Mount Hope Praise Team. Offerings this morning are for the budget and resonate global mission. And we hope that you can join us after the service in the fellowship hall for refreshments. Uh, today we are celebrating the Lord's Supper. All those who are baptized and truly sorry for their sins and who believe in Jesus and a desire to live an abundant, godly life ought to accept the invitation to come in with gladness to the table of their Lord. If you are visiting with us and have children who are accustomed to partaking in the supper with you, know that you are welcome to continue that practice here. Uh, I just have a few announcements. Uh, this week's birthdays and anniversaries. We want to congratulate uh, Marlene Neville on Tuesday, her birthday. And a milestone for Dave and Ann Coning. It's their 65th wedding anniversary on the 3rd. Uh, may it be a special day for you. Uh, the worship series. Um, the congregation is invited to the next session of the worship series this Tuesday, uh, April 2nd at 7.30. Uh, we hope that you can all join us. A message from council. Council will be meeting on Tuesday, April 9th at 7.30 with uh, the classical church visitors. They will attend a portion of the meeting, and as, as it is the annual requirement by classes, if any member has an item or an issue you feel the classical visitors should be informed, of, please contact any member of council. Uh, and again, uh, it's the time of year for the spring food drive. Uh, we need some volunteers for uh, next sa or Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m. to hand out flyers. If you are willing to come and help with handing out or driving a route, uh, please let Marlene or Shay know. And then again, we'll be collecting the food on Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m., uh, we, again, we'll need drivers and carriers for that day, and please let Marlene or Shay know. There is a uh, an announcement from the Mount Hope volunteers. They're asking us to get ready for the annual Mount Hope Community Clean. Mount Hope, uh, he will join in our annual Community Clean to get rid of all the garbage and reveal the beautiful place that is our home. Grab a friend, grab a neighbor, family member, your pet dog, come out for a morning of fun, cleaning, tidying, and garbage collecting. That'll be on Saturday, April 13th from 10 to 11.30. You can pick up the supplies at the bus shelter on Airport Road in uh, Homestead. Once you have your supplies, you can choose your cleanup destination to make it look beautiful. Um, there's no memory work this Sunday, so um, we'll have uh, an Easter litany. Would I ask you to please stand? <laughs> The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. He is not here. Come, see the place where he lay. No, it says all. <laughs> the tomb is found empty for Christ is risen. 
Come join in worship, for he has been raised from the dead. Yes, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. They messed up. <laughs> you done? Our uh, praise team will now lead us in song. risen Lord greets you this morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. Amen and amen. Pray with me. Father God, uh, Father of the risen Christ in whose resurrection we find life and hope, we pray that you would send your spirit to dwell among us uh, as we worship today. Teach us once more uh, to live in the power of Christ's resurrection. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Let's continue to lift up our voices as we sing.
Amen. Please have a seat. You. It's Easter. So let's hear the Easter story, yeah? As we ground ourselves in the grace that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead, Then the disciples went back to their homes. I'll invite uh, Eileen up to come and lead us in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, we confess that sometimes we haven't even looked at the tomb. We have expected the worst and assumed that nothing will change. Pull us away from our assumptions and our fears and help us to live into the good news that death does not have a hold on us. This world cannot dictate our life's direction. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Call us out of our fear to look, to know, and to proclaim Christ's resurrection until he comes again. Amen. And we can sing, I serve a risen Savior. Let's stand together, eh, as we sing.
Please have a seat. And we're about to, we're about to send our, our kids down to children's ministry. And we know there's more of you today. And that's okay. We're ready. And you'll be down there for a short time. And we'll call you up before uh, we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. But just before you go, I just want to tell you what I do. On almost every Sunday morning. Yeah, I can't remember the Latin. Almost every Sunday morning, I eat an egg. This was one of the eggs we boiled. So every Sunday morning, I get like a little Easter egg. Because wouldn't you know it, every Sunday is like a little Easter. Yeah? Today's Easter Sunday, and maybe we have Easter eggs. But every other Sunday, well, we all come to church, and we all come to worship, and we all come because of this Sunday. Because of Easter Sunday, we have all the other Sundays that we come to worship. So every Sunday is a little Easter Sunday. So we, I have my little Easter egg every Sunday morning. And an, East, uh, an egg is such a good reminder for us about Easter because when you take an egg, not this egg, but imagine an egg, and you take it and you break it open, there might be life inside. Probably not any of the eggs you get from the grocery store, but an egg. You break it open, and maybe there's life that comes out. This is like a tomb, yes? And the tomb broke open on this morning, and wouldn't you know it, life came out. Jesus Christ came out of the tomb and gives life to the rest of us as well. So let's pray and be thankful. Heavenly Father, thank you for the life that broke out of the tomb, and thank you for these little eggs as reminders of the beautiful life that we have in Jesus Christ. And we pray for our kids and their teachers as they go down uh, to learn more of you, to experience more of you. We pray for your spirit upon them. And we pray also uh, for your spirit as we uh, dig into the Easter message that we find in the scriptures. So we pray that you would uh, enlighten us and help us to taste some of the life that we have in Jesus Christ too. Thank you, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name, our risen Savior. Amen. Good. So if you're off to children's ministry, be gone. Now, we're going to take a look at the Easter story. And uh, perhaps, sure, perhaps it's worth another read, hey? It's a good story. So let's read again from John chapter 20. We've been, we've been working through the Gospel of John, and uh, now we're up to this chapter here. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. 
He saw the linen cloths lying there in the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Let's also read a few verses from the book of Romans, Romans 8, and we'll just read from from 9 to, 9 to 11, I think. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. These are the words of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, So there's a few days in the year, in the church year, that we we make a big deal of, yeah? We have Christmas, and we do up the sanctuary, and, and we have all the music, and, and that's, that's when we celebrate the incarnation of Jesus, right? When God became human. And so that's an that's a important date that we mark. And then there's Good Friday, right? Which marks uh, the day Jesus was crucified, right? And that was just a couple days ago. And, and we made the point that, really, Jesus, Jesus lived so that he might die. For us. And then, there's, and then there's Easter today. This is when we mark uh, that Jesus was raised from the dead. And as equally true that uh, Jesus lived so that he could die, Jesus died so that he might live. And so that we might live. And we often in the church uh, hang all of our thinking and worship and the, we put it all we put it all on good friday right and we put a big cross on the wall up behind and uh but really it's easter easter is the easter is the big deal the church in the in the west kind of went to good friday the church in the east still like the greek orthodox church and the the east easter is the biggest the most important day that we mark as people of faith right For Jesus was born, and Jesus was crucified. Jesus is risen, yeah? And we hinge all of our faith on on the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And that's why Paul writes, he he writes, right? If Jesus has not been raised from the dead, then your faith is useless. He doesn't write if, you know, Christmas didn't happen, or if Jesus wasn't crucified. He writes, if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, then your faith is useless. But he has been raised from the dead, so... Uh, everything changes. So then, let's look at the the Easter story, right? Uh, Just before our Easter story happened in John, we know that Jesus was uh, buried, and and John writes, he was buried in the the customs of the Jews, right? And so he had uh, 75 pounds of spices, um, uh, and and that was uh, put on top of him and in the linen, and then wrapped up in strips of linen with the spices uh, spices covering his body. And then they uh, lay him in a tomb, and they take this big stone, like it's a big disc, right? Like big, big disc that they roll in front uh, of the tomb. Uh, and so they put that stone over the mouth of the tomb. Uh, and there Jesus lay. And then our story starts, right? While it was still dark. Mary didn't waste time, right? She wanted to get there as soon as she could. While it was still dark, she went, to the, she went to the tomb, and there she found an odd scene that she wasn't expecting. There were uh, no guards posted there. there, there was, uh, the stone was rolled away. Who, would do, who could do that? The stone was, was rolled away. And so she figures the most plausible explanation. Someone stole the body. What are we going to do? That maybe the soldiers took off with it. Maybe there was a, some sort of tomb raider that, that took off with it. That some sort of thief. Maybe she doesn't know what happened. Maybe other disciples. I don't know what's going to happen. So she runs to, to Simon Peter, 
and the, and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, which we uh, take a really good educated guess and say that's John who wrote the story. Uh, so this is John, and he keeps referring to himself as he writes the story as the one whom Jesus loved and this, this other disciple. So, so Peter and John uh, uh, come running, right? We don't, we don't know where Jesus is, she says. We don't know where Jesus is. Do you ever find yourself asking that question? I, I don't know where Jesus is. It'd be really nice, Jesus, if you could just make yourself known to me. She says, we don't know where Jesus is. And so they, they run to the tomb. And as uh, John writes it, right, he gets there first. <laughs> I think it was a point of pride for him. Uh, he was younger than Peter. And so he, younger, faster, he makes it there first. And he doesn't go all the way in. He, he looks in because, I don't know, maybe there's some trepidation, right? Because this isn't right. Something funny is going on. I'm just going to take a, take a peek in and see what's, see what's going on. And then Peter comes. And I always picture Peter as a bit bigger and rotund and, uh, you know, and so I can just see him huffing and puffing uh, down, down to the tomb. And when Peter gets there, he's different than John, when Peter gets there, he just barrels right on into the tomb. He's not stopping. And this is why we love Peter so much, because he does this, right? And you need someone like, you need people like this, right? In, in, in a fellowship or in a, in a group, you need people like Peter. He's the one, right, that jumps out of the boat when Jesus says, hey, come on. Peter's right away. I'll come. Peter's the one who first says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter's the one that draws his sword in the garden against hundreds of soldiers because he's ready. Peter has this uh, contagious courage and chutzpah, right? And so here too, he, he comes and, and he runs into the, into the tomb. And here's what he sees. He sees uh, linen cloths lying there. And he sees a, a, the, the head cloth that would have been wrapped around Jesus' head. It's, it's all folded up, separate, separate from the rest. Well, how do, you, how do you make heads or tails of this? And he starts taking it all in. There's, there's no mention of like the 75 pounds of spices just kind of scattered or anything. The, 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 the strips of linen aren't, aren't piled up, which you would think if they were kind of ripped off the body? Did, did he just pass through the linens? How does, how does this even work? But that head cloth folded separately, right? This is not someone uh, in a hurry. This is not, you know, the work of a, of a thief that needs to get, get in and out. Not a, not a tomb raider. It's, if you put it all together, it would seem... Like, like Jesus rose from the dead, took the claws off his head and folded them up and laid them aside, walked out. I was looking at this scene with Peter, and I got caught up, right, in, in, in how the linens are laying there and how the other ones folded up, and I got... Uh, caught up in the, in the characters and John, young, young John, that's faster than Peter and Peter, and I got caught up in the, in the characters and, uh, and, and in all the details of the scene, and I, I almost missed it as I, as I read this. I almost missed the forest for the trees. The, the, the point is, there was a resurrection. Sure, there's linens and there's all this kind of stuff, but, but he was raised from the dead, and I almost missed it. Because John, the way he tells the story, doesn't, doesn't tell the story with all the flash and with all the dazzle, right? There's no, in other Gospels, there's, there's a big earthquake, right? And there's, and there's soldiers trembling in fear. And there's uh, resurrections of uh, other bodies that come out. And there's angels by the tomb announcing the news to, to, to people. And, and there's these big events. But John, John just tells the story. And we could, we could almost put ourselves in that story and think, yeah, yeah, we would have kind of done the same thing if, if we were there. I get, I get what John's doing. I get what Peter's doing. I, I understand what Mary's doing. I, I, I get this. So Peter's surveying this scene, figuring it out, and then John finally enters. I guess maybe this is his way of kind of admitting that he was maybe a little uh, fearful of going in, a little unsure, but he does actually make it in. And he goes in and he 
sees and believes. The fact of the resurrection dawns on them. He sees it all and believes. And then the story ends with they go back to their homes. I guess what else do you do? Uh, they go back to their homes. But there's this new hope, right, rising up inside of them. This, this sense of wonder and mystery. And, but, they, but they go home. How do we take this to our homes, right? We need a belief in the resurrection that buoys us each day. A belief in the resurrection that we can work out and nurture in our daily lives, in our day-to-day tasks. Can we take, can we take Easter home with us, right? Because it, it, it can't stay here, right? It's great. It's important that we celebrate and we worship on Easter Sunday. This is, this is good. But the, the news of the resurrection and the fact of the resurrection and the difference of the resurrection can't just stay here. It has to go with us out, yeah? We can't just celebrate and forget we need to celebrate and be, and be changed. The story starts while it was still dark. That's where Easter happens, right? While it was still dark. Still in their fear, right? Because Jesus was just crucified a little bit ago. Still in their grief, in their sadness, in their disappointment, in their confusion and their sense of being lost. That's, that's their lived reality, right? And that's where it starts, while it's still dark. While, it, while, it, while they're in this reality that they're living in, this is where Easter starts coming to them, yeah? And this happens for us too, even today. Easter happens while it's still dark. In our daily reality, in our day-to-day, right? In the midst of all of our anxieties that we might carry with us about faith and life and church and, uh, and, and our day-to-day decisions that we make and, and, and um, trying to figure out how to, how to live well, right? This is where Easter comes. And then once we believe in the resurrection of the dead, then we need to take that belief and bring it home with us, yeah? And we need to bring it to the nursing home, and we need to bring it to our broken homes, and we need to bring it to the funeral home. We need to bring it to our home rooms, and we need to bring it uh, to the bench with our home team, and we need to bring it from, to our homes away from home where we spend, spend our time. We need to take that, that with us. Yeah, we need to take that belief in the resurrection with us so that we would be provided with the, the zeal that we need when we want to give up or we'd be provided with the courage that we need when we're afraid, or we'd be provided with the hope that we have when we are sorrowing or when we are lost. And here's how Peter writes it later on. God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? This is a new birth into a living hope. What a great source of encouragement is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a God we have and how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven, and the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. That's what what Peter says, and it checks out. So don't, don't just celebrate Easter today worship and then maybe dinner or, a, or an Easter egg hunt or, or whatever. Don't just celebrate Easter today and then forget it, right? It needs to show up in your life each week, day by day, yeah? Our trouble is uh, Easter is not announced to us each day with earthquakes and angels and trumpets sounding. So we need to pay attention, perhaps. And maybe the resurrection can dawn on us in smaller ways and and we can look and take it in. And and also, the Holy Spirit is uh, living and active, right? And can remind us, but even more than remind us, can animate us with that resurrection life. 
Here's how, here's how Paul says it. We read it in Romans 8. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's that, that's that, that's that quality of life that we're looking for, right? We talked about it weeks ago. If you weren't here, there's, you know, uh, we can talk about our, our biological life how things have life, they live and they breathe, or a plant has life, or, uh, you know, that's biological life, and we can describe the biological processes of what makes life. Uh, but John is always talking about that, that Zoe life, another Greek word that he uses to describe life, which is that quality of life, where we go, ah, now this is living, yeah? And, and this is the kind of life that we have through the Spirit of God because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul says, just much more succinctly. Eugene Peterson paraphrases it like this. We don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent. There's nothing in it for us. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with our new life. God's spirit beckons. That's how we're reminded of the resurrection day by day because God's spirit beckons us. So take heed. The Holy, the Holy Spirit, the power and presence of the risen Lord, yeah, dwells in us. And we have then the Jesus' resurrection life with us every day, yeah? Now, the early church gathered and worshipped every Sunday. Every Sunday after that, it seems, they got together uh, and, and celebrated and worshipped and spent time in fellowship because that was resurrection day. We, we call it Sabbath, but for them that wasn't Sabbath. Sabbath was Saturday. Sunday... And there's things you do for Sabbath. Sure, Sunday was the Lord's day. This is Sabbath, and we need to mark that. This is the next day, the resurrection day. So this is the day that we get together and, and worship and celebrate and praise. And still to this day, as the church, we get together on Sundays because it's the resurrection day. And that's the key to our faith. So it's for every day, not just, not just once a year, right? Right? It's for every week and every day. And not only did the, the early church get together to worship every Sunday, Resurrection Day, it seems that they also celebrated the Lord's sun, Supper every, every Lord's Day. Every Resurrection, they celebrated the Lord's Supper because that's also uh, how we celebrate the Resurrection. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper in a moment. And this, by celebrating the Lord's Supper together... This is how, this is part of how we take uh, belief in the resurrection home with us, right? This is a part of how we take belief in the resurrection and, and, and uh, take it in. For Jesus rose from the dead, he is risen, and his life is for us. Let's pray. Almighty God, you rose Jesus from the dead uh, for our salvation, and so we're thankful, uh, and we celebrate that. And we pray that today, and then in the days ahead, that you would uh, remind us of your resurrection, but also uh, encourage us and give us that eternal life because of your resurrection through the work of your Holy Spirit. This we ask in the name of Jesus and for his glory. Amen. As we uh, reflect on that and as we prepare to come to the table, uh, let's sing. So if you're able, please rise with us and we'll, uh, we'll sing.
I'll invite our servers to come and take a seat in the front, and I'll invite the rest of us to, to sit down. Well, children's ministry teachers, thank you for that, and it warms my heart. You must have done something good because all the kids are coming back with smiles on their faces, so that's good. And it's good to be smiling today because this is the joyful feast of the Lord, yes? And we give thanks to God the Father that our Savior, Jesus Christ, gave us then this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. And so here's how it came about. Uh, when Jesus was eating with his disciples, he took bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said... This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you. And whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so we, uh, in obedience, come to eat the bread and drink the cup. Uh, here's a way to remember and understand what's going on here. Uh, this is a meal of remembrance, of communion, and of hope. Remembrance, communion, and hope. We remember, right? We remember that Jesus took on flesh. He took on our humanity. He took on our condition, our sin, our guilt, our humanity. He died, putting all of that on the cross, freeing us from all that guilt, and, uh, and, and, and was raised again to live. He lived, he died, and he lives again. So we remember that. It's a feast of uh, communion, Right? Through faith, through the operation of the Holy Spirit, uh, when we eat and drink, we are uh, communing with Christ. We have uh, Christ's life in us. Yeah, so now what is true of Jesus is true of us. And it's a feast of, of hope, because we are the people of the resurrection, and so we live with great hope. So as we eat and drink, remember the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and your union with him and be thankful. Let's pray. Gracious and merciful God, on this Easter morning, pour out your spirit upon this ordinary bread that it might offer us life and on the cup that it might overflow with grace and on your people gathered in this place. People with great faith and people who struggle with it people who sort of understand the mystery and those who have questions, people who have tried to follow Jesus and those of us who have failed. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Frustrated with your sin? Longing for the life of Christ? Then these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
And so we take and we eat and we remember and we believe that the body of Christ was broken for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. And so we take and we drink and we remember and believe that the blood of Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins.
After a meal, uh, we pray. I'll invite Mark up to lead us in our prayers. Good morning. Um, As Pastor Joel said, my name is Mark. I'm going to lead you in congregational prayer today. Um, and also, as Doug said this morning, there's a, a few special events in our, in our church this week. Uh, Dave and Ann Coning celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary and, and Marlene celebrating her birthday. So another special mention of there. But also um, some loss in our, in our church family. Um, we, uh, we grieve and give our condolences to Jackie Frith, who lost her sister-in-law this past week, and also to Yanni Bavart. Yanni, we're so sorry to hear of your brother in Holland passing away. So yeah, our sympathies with you. Um, and also, um, Joanna Wiersma, um, yeah, who has been failing as of late, um, I'm sad to announce, passed away last evening. So we don't know any details or anything of the funeral arrangements, but um, I'm sure as Marlene and Pastor Joel know those, they'll be, they'll be made known to us as a congregation um, set. So we, uh, we give our condolences and our sympathies and, and uh, yeah, heartfelt, yeah, sorrow to the, the Wiersma family this week, so... Will you bow your heads with me in prayer? Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We praise you for your grace, for your goodness, for your mercy, and we praise you for your love and your caring to us. You created this world, have dominion over us, and you are our help in times of need. It is Easter, and we give you praise and honor for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as our risen Savior giving us salvation and reconciliation to you, our Lord God. Lord, we come to you, we confess to you, we bow here and we find our rest. Without you, we fall apart, for you are the one who guides our hearts. Lord, we need you every hour and every day we need you. You are our one defense and our righteousness, and we submit to you and your authority, Lord. O Lord, how we need you. Lord, kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers are subject to you, and we ask for your blessing on those who hold power over our lives. May you bless our prime minister, our premier, mayor, our city councillors to make decisions wisely and act with integrity. There seems to be such turmoil in this world, Lord, trouble in every continent on this earth, war in Gaza, war in Ukraine. Lord, may there be swift and peaceful solutions to these conflicts, and will you show yourself in the injustices of this world. There are places where evil truly prevails, where people do unspeakable things. And Lord, we ask that somehow that you can be there and come to make these things come to an end and that your glory may be seen. Lord, you have led us here to this Mount Hope community. We have a beautiful building. We have a growing community of families and homes all around us. And Lord, we ask that your presence always be among us and fill each of us with your Holy Spirit that this church may be on fire for your kingdom and for the gospel to be preached truthfully and boldly through this congregation to the community around us. Our church is working hard through its committees and programs, through council and its pastor. Let each part of this body work together and be guided by your will. Bless our dedicated volunteers who are part of the fellowship, worship and administration committees those who work in Sunday school, nursery, sound, video, and other duties. Bless those who are under the the employment of our church in administration and finances, and be with our elders to serve well this congregation, and be with our deacons who are in charge of taking care of the needy and the widows and widowers in our congregation. Be with our pastor, Joel. Help him continue in gaining the confidence of this congregation. Help us as a congregation be a blessing to him as well. Guide him in his work to administer the word, pastor this congregation, and be a leader in order that we might be a light to the community around us. Thank you for Joel and his family, as they are such an important part of our church community. Lord, be with those who are in need in our church family. Cancer, disease, headaches, nausea, heart and lung conditions, aches and pains come to all of us at some point or other. Be with those who need healing, comfort and rest. Be with those who are under doctor and surgeon's cares, in long-term facilities and assisted living. Be especially at this time with Joan Elzinga and Marge Postuma as they live with their cancer. Be with Kobe Lammers as she waits for surgery and with Debbie as she recovers from her surgery, as well as Anne DeGroote. And Lord, we ask that you be with Joanna Weersmith's family as you have taken her home to be with you. 
Be with them, Lord, and give them the strength and the peace that they need at this time. Be with others who grieve for their mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters, and husbands or wives. This is a difficult weekend for those who grieve. Please lift up those who need you. We especially lift up to you this day, Jackie Frith and Yanni Bavart as well. Dear God, be with those who have special occasions this week. Give a special measure of your blessing to Dave and Anne as they celebrate their 50th or 65th wedding anniversary. And also, Lord, give a special blessing to Marlene, who is such a wonderful person and who does so much for our congregation. Will you please continue to bless and keep Marlene and her family and in the palm of your hand. Today is Easter and Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Thank you, Lord, that we serve a risen Savior. And will you give us all a good day to celebrate and give you glory for your Son and the grace that you have given us. And may we live a life in service to you. Bless us all, Lord, that we may be a blessing to you. Praise your name, O Lord our God. Praise your name forevermore. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Oh, good, good timing. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Mark. Uh, part of our worship is uh, in giving, so I'll invite our deacons up to lead us in our, in our giving. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us so richly, and we give uh, as a way to say thank you. And we pray that um, this money would be used well in your kingdom to uh, help enable your word about the resurrection of Jesus from the dead uh, to uh, burst forth through our community here in Mount Hope and around the world. Pray this in his name. Amen. Uh, so yeah, this week we have, on uh, Tuesday night, we have a get-together to talk about uh, worship. We'll kind of finish talking about the Lord's Supper, and we'll continue to talk about worship. And we also have a food drive on Saturday. Let me invite our musicians up, as they were itching to get up here. And I'd uh, ask you to stand as we prepare to leave. Right, we, we could go now, uh, after we sing our last song, we could go home and back to regular life, and that's that. But as Christ birth forth, burst forth from the tomb, may new life burst forth from us, yeah? And show itself in acts of love and healing to a hurting world. And may that same Christ who lives forever and is the source of our new life, may he keep your hearts rejoicing and grant you his peace this day and always. Amen.